Yes, yes, yes. Hey guys, Gerald Peters. Welcome back to The Money Flow. Always remember, whatever you think about comes about. Whatever you focus on grows, and that's what we're about to do. I'm fixing to go record a Twitter space. I don't know if you've been on Twitter. I don't know if you've indulged in these spaces. They're pretty neat. A lot of people ask me to record them. Twitter doesn't have an option to do that, so I'm doing that on video. I hope you enjoyed today's message. Let me know down in the comments, and uh, that's it. I appreciate it. remember whatever you think about comes about let me take this camera up whatever you focus on grows in your life I was just talking about this on my story and I'm always playing an instrument I've been fucking around with this blue tarp and I think you should play around and try to be creative at times whether that's through art I think it's it's part of life man you need a creative outlet if you're always practical and always reasonable you know Life, something about art, and it's doing something just to do something. Like, you know, maybe you play backgammon, and maybe you just indulging in sports is that for you. But for me, I like to participate. And I've found throughout the years as I do these things, it helps me think about investing. Um, you know, guitar, and it, investing, the secret to investing is philosophy. It's not complicated, man. Like, I'm doing this little event at my house. And if I could summarize it, it's time times amount times yield. I'm over here writing. Huh? And I just did this podcast with this kid in Britain, and he may be on here. I don't know. I say kid. I call a lot of people kid, younger than me. You know, by more than 10 years, you're a kid. And he's getting the philosophy. Greg Cardone has this video. I just sent it to a friend of mine. We were talking philosophy. And, it, and I was like, man, I've watched this video about 50 times. He really does a good job of breaking it down. And in his video, it's entitled How to Become a Millionaire. And it's, it's not complicated. You, you have a certain amount of time. And then there's amount and there's yield. And, and we have to live on some money. And not everyone has this dream. Or the, and not everyone is chasing this. And I wish I was more committed. If I, if I, the hell was that? Sorry, I thought I had notifications off. If I was more committed, I'd be a hell of a lot richer now, you know? Um, I'm not, I'm way more committed here at 50 than I was at 30. And yet I could work harder at 30 than I can at 50, 51. And people say, oh, you're only as young as you think. Yeah, well. Your prostate doesn't follow motivational thinking, bro. You know, your hair doesn't follow motivational thinking. Your mind might, but the rest of the world keeps aging. And time starts to compress. And we were kind of talking about this. You know, when we get on this subject of time, times amount, times yield, and it doesn't matter if we're talking about stocks or REITs, right? We can have dividend stocks. You can invest in those. You can invest in REITs. We got closed in funds, call them CLFs, right? What else we got? We got just single family real estate. There's multifamily real estate. We could do that ourselves. We could do that through a syndication, right? There's just straight up investing in a business or having a piece of the action. I've never done that, but I got a friend that owns a piece of a restaurant. I got a friend that owns a piece of a parking lot. I got a friend that owns a piece of a, a trailer park. And I got a guy that owns like a piece of a bunch of shit. And he's in the business of collecting money. And I can't tell you how to do that because I haven't done that, but I think I can figure out how to do it for myself. I think I'm fixing to get in this parking lot game. Um, and I'm thinking about like, what's the best way to do that? Where's the best place? Um, you know, there's Airbnbs a game. And if we look at something like that, Airbnb, well, time. In the Airbnb game, you get paid daily. So, what, and this is one of the things that I was trying to explain to him what helped me, so as I'm buying dividend stocks over the years, I'm accumulating houses. So we got houses, right? Got dividend stocks. Well, when I get to like 100K in dividend stocks, I got four rentals. Dude, 
I know it. two dozen people off the top of my head in my phone that have that. That's not difficult, okay? It's a good accomplishment. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But I got another dozen friends that own 20 plus proper, well, not a dozen, six. I don't wanna lie. I got six friends that they all own 10 or more properties. Work is a blessing. Work is what helps them get rich. And you say, what do you mean? Well, they're making five G's a month just on the rentals. They work to make big money so they can do bigger things, right? This allows them to drink $100, you know, $200 bottles of wine. If they do a $400 dinner, they're not choosing between buying Bitcoin and going to dinner. They go to dinner and they buy Bitcoin. And that's what real estate allows you to do. And I had a guy yesterday on my thing, oh, you look like a bum. All right, huh. I can afford to. You can't. You got to get a job. I don't need one. So I can look like however I want to look. That's the price of money, man. Freedom. Like when you have even as little as a million, which is not a lot, you know, it's not a lot, but it is a lot. Okay, let's don't be stupid. It, it, it is a lot, but you're not flying around in private planes, right? But you can conservatively bring home 50, 60,000. I could do more. I could bring home 100. I mean, you know, I think, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure with my skill set, time times amount times yield, I know how to make money with money. If you gave me a million dollars, I could make six figures on it just sitting at home. I mean, it's not that complicated. And we could diversify it. Right now, there's a bunch of REITs on sale because of interest rates. You are paying attention to that, right? You want to buy when other people are fearful. So there's a legitimate reason to be fearful. Uh, supply chain problems are legitimate. So I've been investing in what? Haynes Brands, Uber. Am I putting the whole wad in Haynes Brands and Uber? No, but I, I want to get 37000 or so in Uber. And I want to get 18000 in Haynes Brands. What does that look like in seven years? It's not, I mean, come on, that's not a lot of money. It's a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money. There's some of you make that in a month. I mean, you put one month's salary, ooh, big risk taker. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, these things are perspective. Well, maybe we drop a zero and you're doing 3,700 and 1,800. That's what you're trying to do. Why? I already own these guys. Six years ago, I was buying AG and C and Haynes Brands. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm adding to them. I'm expanding my wealth. Where's this money coming from? From fucking houses that I bought. Where's that money come from? From the jobs that I was working. You see what I'm saying? So now I got to take the money and the assets, time, times amount, times yield. So I'm getting yield on some of these. Some of these assets, I'm not. I'm not getting anything on Bitcoin. I could. I could move all my Bitcoin to Voyager. Now I'm getting 4.5%, 4.7%, right? I'm trying to get to two Bitcoins. Well, 4.5% on two Bitcoins, making some money. Two or 300 a month in Bitcoin, free, right? We could do that trip. I'm not doing it because that doesn't really mean a lot to me right now. 200 bucks, I don't give a fuck. Like, I mean, it's just not enough to make me, me now, but if I'm you, maybe. Maybe a $200 a month drip to use is, a, is good, and that, that's fine. I'm not shitting on that. I'm just saying, you know, Buffett's not getting out of bed for that. But when I'm 32 and I'm trying to do this, I'm getting out of bed for 10 bucks. I mean, I don't know what the fuck, man. I can't have dead days. I can't have days where there's no money coming in. Even now at 51 years old, every day needs to produce cash. So when I go to sleep, I need to know I got all these properties out there. They're going to make me money. And this confuses people because they say, well, you can't make money daily. Well, you can't on Airbnb. So I'm getting into that game. You can't in parking lots, right? But that aside, when I had five houses, very doable. I know 20 people on my phone that have five houses, okay? That is not that big a deal. I had lunch yesterday with a follower. He said, hey, G, I'm coming to Dallas. Could I come see you? Sometimes I say yes, sometimes I say no. Right, what? Depends on what I'm doing. Why? Time, times amount, times yield. Shit, I might be doing something important. I might be working on a house. So I show him all my properties. Showed him over, you know, what? $2 million in houses. Complete stranger. What do we talk about? Money game. He's got three properties. He's wanting to get to 10, 12, 15 properties. Well, how are you going to do that? Hanging around people that have 10, 15 properties. 
So that event I did at my house, I don't know, it's during Mardi Gras in a historic city, right? Just me and one other guy have 40 together. Everyone in the room, it's over 100 rental properties. Could someone in that room tell you something about rental properties? <laughs> Think of that, 200 bucks. If I could have paid 200 bucks to be in a room with the guys that had 100 properties who were just normal people willing to talk to me, how much time could I have saved myself fucking around with gurus and other dumb shit? I could have just began applying myself to what works day after day after day. So the chasing stuff, I just said, what did you do? And they go, well, here's what I did. And then I go, do that. And that's what I did, man. I didn't learn real estate from a guru. I didn't learn real estate from a course. I met a guy who had bought a bunch of houses, turned it into a... Ha! Hey, listen, I hate to interrupt this awesome class that we're in with me, but listen, you probably have it. If you don't, go get my free ebook. You don't have to die broke. It's free, like free. Like it's easy to read, it's free. If you want a hard copy, I'll send you one. If you get that, you wanna take your trading, your investing to the next level. When should you add to AT&T? When should you buy 3M? When should you buy Facebook? I got you covered on that. It's right in here in the Money Flow Trading System uh, book. Hit my bio link, you can get to it. I got a special going right now on both of these for 87 bucks. I'd be happy to send it to you. And if you have them, go get the journal. You gotta write down these tickers. What you think about comes about, what you focus on grows. Appreciate you. Now back to the video. flipped all the houses, bought an assisted living home, turned that into $64 million asset with 100 employees producing, like, I don't even know how many, hundreds of thousands a month in cash flow. And he did that by buying one house at 19 years old. By the time he was 21, 22, they had four, then eight, then like 15, then sold them all and purchased, put all of that money into one deal. And now he's worth like $20 million, collects like, like it's north of 25,000 a month just in dividends on stocks because he rolled it all into that. And now what? Started over doing the game he was doing at 18. Go find a property. Like that's who I'm hanging out with. That's what I'm trying to think about, right? And so, but I can't do it on his level. I don't know shit about the assisted living home. But he told me how to buy houses, so I started buying them. And then, because of him, I started investing in assisted living homes. If you have my book, You Don't Have to Die Broke, Well, W-E-L-L, -L, pays a dividend, VTRS, these are assisted living homes. Through my influence with him, I now got about, I don't know, $40,000 invested in there, paying about 5% yield. When they're on sale, I add to them. I plan to die with them. I'll probably have $100,000 in that one sector. Well, what about oil? Well, I'm in Texas, so I've got about $60,000, $70,000 in oil. That started with buying one share of Exxon. What's the difference? I didn't sell it. So every oil crisis, I bought more oil. I ignored all the dipshits on YouTube, giving me all the fear, and the fucking Jim Cramers, all them. Fuck them. Fuck them. Don't give a fuck about anybody on TV or some hedge fund. Now, I might read things, and there's, there's smart people out there, but I'm, my conviction isn't you can't rent it or borrow it. You know, what's your price? Shit, all most people. I got kids every day dealing with me. I'm thinking about selling this. That was all it took? One fucking sell-off? That's it? So I've wasted all my fucking time for two years talking to you, teaching, showing history, going back throughout time, and that's all it took, one fucking sell-off, and you're done. And people are like, why would you get mad, dude? Because fucking poverty pisses me off. And if that's all it takes for you to lose conviction is other people have a negative fucking opinion, and you're out, you're done, you're tapping out. And I watch people during COVID do this. Oh, we didn't buy that property. We didn't. Well, you look pretty smart now. Because they didn't do anything but go up. And I have video after video of was taken off of internet, taken off of Instagram because me telling people how fucking stupid that is. Tell them don't buy properties because of COVID. Are you out of your mind? You go the opposite of the herd. So if everyone hates tech stocks, you love tech stocks. 
If everyone hates Bitcoin, you love Bitcoin. If everyone hates Exxon, you love Exxon. That is how you get rich. Everything else is bullshit. The mean chasing, fucking Shiba, the Dogecoin, and the NF, all that is just bullshit. It's all bullshit. You buy value when it's on sale. It is not complicated. You can go read story after fucking story, business after fucking business, where that's how they built wealth. Courage. Fuck, man, we're still trying to explain this to people. I think I blocked more people this week than I've ever blocked in my life. I can't take it. Fuck out of here. Go, go spread that shit to somebody else. I know how wealth is built. It's not built on CNBC. There's some fucking asshole. Oh, I'm shorting this. So you guys should, you do that, okay? I'm getting rich. And I know what it is. You buy foreclosures. You don't go foreclosed. You buy the stocks that are half price. You don't sell the stocks that are half price. This is not complicated, man. And it does make me mad, and it should make me mad. That entire country, generational fucking poverty. You know why? Because they don't buy anything. Let me break it down for you. Whether you're white, black, Indian, or fucking purple, if you don't own assets that produce cash flow or go up in value over time, you are broke always. Whether you're in a trailer park the Vario, a fucking ghetto. You're broke. Unless you begin to take actions, which is what? You need money. But just having money is not going to do anything. I worked in a prison filled with guys that made more money than me, and they don't have shit. And yet I'm a prison guard, one of the lowest paid jobs in fucking America. And then I mow yards, lawns. Does that look complicated to you to get up every day, go to a prison, and then go mow yards? Does that look hard? No. And there's people that make five times more money than me, and I'm worth way more than they are. Why? Transactions. Time times amount. What I put my money in, what I put the time that I put in, the amount that I put in, and what I did, and the yield that I got compounded over five to seven year cycles. And so a house that cost 49000 17 years ago, I put 12000 down. I recently sold for 200000 to put what? Down on a beach house. Did you need to be an engineer to do that? Did you need to have a PhD and be a fucking doctor to understand what I just said? No, that's time times amount times yield. But a bunch of years ago, I had to put the 12000 down. And guess what had just happened? A tech crisis. Stock market had just crashed. That's why I got it for 49. The guy that owned it blew out. He blew out, man. And I was there to pick it up. One man's foreclosures, another man's beach house. And right now, we've been given an opportunity. People talk like it's a bad thing. I realize I've been wasting my fucking time for two years talking to people. They don't get it. They never understood it. Never even started. Money flow is not a fucking trade thing. It's a life, man. It's a way of viewing life. And the reason you get rid of debt, and I always tell people you gotta get rid of debt. Well, I'm gonna keep my student loan because yeah, that looks real good when your stocks drop by 70 fucking percent and you still got the student loan. And I try telling people this. The reason you get rid of the debt is so that you can be aggressive when the thing goes on sale. So you're not making all these dumb payments. You have money. You can now buy Bitcoin aggressively. And he said, what was, what's the difference? I said, listen, when I, me and my friends started this, we all had the same thing. A job. We drink beer after work. I'm still, I'm drinking beer right now. What time is it? It's two o'clock. I got a beer. Cause I feel like fucking having one. My friend can't do that. He's at work. And here's the difference. I stopped doing this a lot started exchanging my weekends for assets. I, I, I mean, I, I can't come, or I'll be there later. I gotta get up early on Saturday, I gotta go, we're painting this house. What is that? It's a future beach house. And you say, well, was it a good deal? Did you, no, I don't know. When I bought it, it wasn't that great a deal, man. 16 years later, it's a great fucking deal. 
The point is I don't want dead time. So I don't want to sit around waiting on the perfect deal when every fucking day goes by equity increase, equity increase, equity increase, loan pay down, rent collection, and you're sitting around waiting on something. What are you waiting on? And then I get asked and it drives me crazy. Well, should I do? Just do something. It doesn't need to be perfect. You need to be doing it every day. That's what you need to do, man. Every day. You should be in a real estate deal every fucking day. And you say, what do you mean? I mean, every fucking day you're trying to acquire real estate. Not thinking about it. You're in the middle of it. There's a deal being done. Or you owe a contractor. Or you've got to go clean this. Or, oh, well, we got to get this right here. We got to get, like, it's always, every day in your life. It's a giant fucking drag because every day someone's calling you. That's how you get rich. Not casually, not comfortably. Not, you know, I don't know. We'll see later. Everyone I talk to is waiting on something. Oh, after this, after the, you know, we're going to do it. No, go do it right now. Right fucking now. Cole, get on and go do it right this second. Whenever you tell people that, they can't. I'm trying to, right this fucking second. I would love to have another deal. But I'm in the middle of paying for a deal. I'm working on a deal. I got to get it up so I can get it rented so I can what? Get a deal. So why? So I can get more money. Why? So I can buy more stocks. So what is today? Now think about this for a second. Today's what, 27? Fixing collect rent. I'm gonna collect rent on 13 properties. Now, a bunch of them are paid for. So I'll probably clear after setting aside for shit, I don't know, five grand or so. Maybe more. I don't need it. Say, what do you mean? I don't need the money. My, my shit's paid for. I already got it. I'm good. No car payment. I don't have I don't need it. My house is paid for. I don't need the money. What do I get to do with it? Come on, man. Five G's? Go look at the YYY. That pays 8%. A, G, and C. All these closed-in fund shit. I'm putting five grand to work. What happens next month? My cash flow just went up. I still have the five, but my dividends went up five grand, right? What if I do it again next month? That's 10. Now we got 10 in there. I still got the 10. My cash flow went up. What if I stay on that all year? Hmm. That's not me adding work money. That's me adding money from the work money that produced money. You see how you begin to grow exponentially. So the answer isn't, should I do it? The answer is, why aren't I doing it more aggressive? You should be working on your second Bitcoin if you're into Bitcoin. We got to get past the first one, man. Everyone in the money flow gang should have at least one Bitcoin. I mean, fuck, dude. Why not? You know, everyone who's around me should have at least two houses. Like, come on, man. Like, what are we? I mean, I'm waiting on you. That's not that hard, bro. Everyone listening to me right now has, you were born in fact, you have a phone. You can go get your credit score. You can go get the money. Everyone around me should grow richer every day. There's zero fucking excuse. Now, I didn't say your account balance doesn't change. All you guys still thinking that Bitcoin is a dollar amount? Don't fucking understand investing. We're still doing baby stuff with you. Bitcoin is not about the price of Bitcoin. It's about how many Bitcoins do you have? And I just blew most of the people listening's mind because you don't look at it like that at all. You're looking at the fucking price, thinking that's something. Price don't mean shit. So when we go look at a rent house, I don't care what you paid for it. It doesn't matter. So what? Houses where you live cost 200. Over here, they cost 150. In New York, they cost 450. And over in Panama City, I bought just cost me 315. And the house that I paid, like these numbers all change, man. Then it's not it's the theory, it's the philosophy. So I don't care what the number is, what is the rent? What's the rent? 
See, if you don't know the rent, you don't know shit about investing. You're on the wrong thing, man. It's not about the cost of the house. It's what is the rent? Because if we, once we know the rent, we know what we can service on the cost of the house. You do it the other way around, you can lose money. So you start with how much can you collect? So if we go to Bitcoin, what is the annual, what is the average return over the last 13 years per year? I didn't, you notice in there, I didn't ask you what's the price of Bitcoin. I don't give a shit what the price of Bitcoin is. What is the average return of Bitcoin? That's what you, that's what you're playing. That's the rent collection. What will my money coming in today? What is the average? So in the S&P 500, I don't care where the S&P 500 is. Guess where it's going to be in a few years? Higher. Like if we're still trying to settle that, you don't understand investing at all. And I can't teach you because we're stuck on the basics. You know, we got to get past that, dude. So if you want to get to growing, well, time times amount times yield. How much does the S&P go up every year? You need to know that. Because you're going to value other investments against it. So my no risk return is 9% a year. So if you give me a million dollars, I can make 9% a year doing nothing. You say, what do you mean? Put in the S&P 500. Pull off 9%. You'll keep the million dollars the rest of your life. Now, if you go, well, I don't understand. Because you don't understand investing. That is the average. Sometimes it's up 16%. Sometimes it's down 20%. Sometimes it's up four. Sometimes it's down six. Sometimes it runs up 17. And over the years, it averages 9%. Same in real estate. You may go vacant for three months and then be rented for two and a half years. Maybe your area appreciates 17% a year for three years and then stagnates. Look at these, these, you get what I'm saying? This is how the numbers work. And this is super important because it helps explain the theory of everything, the theory of investing. And so as I look at the different asset classes, the SPY, that's stocks, the SDY, that's dividend stocks. Did you know that? Right? There's REITs, right? There's Bitcoin, right? What else is there? There's growth stocks. What else is there, right? What? Real estate, single family, right? These are the things. And then we get into the purview of business, and that's more sophisticated. You're investing in this, you're flipping it, you're buying an apartment, like trailer, like there's all kinds of other shit. But this is the basic stuff that you can get into that I think you should understand. When do I want to buy it? When it's inexpensive, when do I want to sell it? When it's more, right? So what? Three, four months ago now, I had to sell $60,000 in stocks. I didn't want to, but I needed to. Why? My trading account was pretty large. It was the largest it had been in a while. It was 160K. I don't normally trade with that. For many, many, many years, I traded with 50,000. And if it ran up to say 60, 67, I'd pull some off. And if it went under 50, shit, I'm looking to put some in. And I'd play that little game back and forth. And here's what most people do. I want to trade for a living. What the fuck is that mean? I want to trade for a living. You mean you want to sit at a computer and stare at a monitor? Nobody does that. Kathy Wood doesn't even do that. She runs a business called ARC Funds. They have employees and they pay people and they get a cut on the thing. Warren Buffett doesn't even do that. He doesn't trade for a living. He owns a business called Brookshire Hathaway. Mark Cuban doesn't do it. Nobody rich does one thing for a living. That's how poor people think. Oh, I want to be a day trader. Okay, be broke. There is none because a day trader to be a successful day trader very quickly better become a good investor. Oh, you're just never going to have a losing year. Tom Brady never had a losing year, right? So there's more to this game than one activity. So you say, well, I want to do real estate for a living. I don't even know what that means. I don't do real estate for a living. I own like two, almost $3 million in real estate. I don't do it for a living. What do I do for a living? I live. Right? Got a million dollars in stocks. I don't do stocks for a living. I live. I mean, I'm, what am I? What? It's it's not one thing, man. Anybody doing stocks for a living is what? What am I doing? I teach it. Right? Why? Because nobody's doing it for a living, guys. Why would people teach real estate if they're doing it for a living? Now, could you live on it? Yes. And the moment you do, you're at risk. 
See, the moment I need this asset to perform for certain, so a la I retire at 65 and now they give me all my stocks in the first sell-off, I go into total fucking panic because I haven't actually watched stocks. I've been working, not paying attention to the market, which is why you got the money to retire in the first place. But now that they give you the money and you're watching the ups and downs, you can't actually take it because you don't have 20 years of training as a trader and investor. You have 20 years of working and not looking at your account. And by not looking at your account, you did the one thing that worked. Time times amount times yield and your fucking assets grew. But now they hand them to you and they say, you handle them. And you have zero fucking experience in handling it. And the first sell off, you're like, my friend's hitting me now. You think I should get out of these stocks? Why? Because they, they had a year of shit going up. Watch how many people don't like NFTs when they crash. Well, that shit will be over. Where's all my Sheba army at? Huh? Where are they at? They ain't talking shit now, right? Well, if it was so good, why aren't you buying it now? <laughs> this doge is so good, why aren't you buying it now? That proves to you it's not good. Well, guess what I am buying now? Haynes Brands. Right? at and T's on the list. ETRNY. These are real businesses that produce real cash flow. Now, I might buy some Sheba now. Why? Because everybody else doesn't like it. See, I want to buy when they don't like it. When they like it, I want to sell it to them. So when everybody loves NFTs, fuck NFTs. They're about to crash. We want to buy them when nobody likes them. So you want Bitcoin when it crashes and nobody wants it. It's coming down. Now you want to get aggressive with Bitcoin. Right? Not the other way around, man. This is philosophy. This is theory. And until you get theory, you're never going to be good at this game. Never. Because right now is when the hammer should be getting put down in stocks. And right now is when it's not. And people feel a little nauseous. And they're not overly happy about it. Now, some of you are. I'm not talking to everybody. Remember, I got a lot, wide range of students, man. Wide range of students. That doesn't mean I don't like NFTs. All you guys calm down and get fucking... There's three cults in the world. T Tesla. All you gotta do is talk about Tesla and people start peeing themselves. Tesla. XRP. All fucking lunatics right here. That's a giant cult. The moment you start talking about it, they go into convulsions, want to send you death threats, call you names. Right? This is a cult. XRP. That's why I'm not in it. Because they act like a cult. Right? right now, there's people freaking out that I'm saying that. There's my proof. Right, I used to make fun of Tesla. You know why I made fun of Tesla? Because I got followers. Because people couldn't believe that I was saying what I was saying about it. I was this stupid company. I don't have a problem with Tesla, guys. I'm trying to grow my followership. That's called marketing. You say crazy things and people click on it. It's called clickbait. People go to YouTube. YouTube is filled with idiots doing clickbait. All you got to do is get you to look at it and say Bitcoin's going to zero. If I post a video saying Bitcoin's going to zero, I promise you I'll get more viewers than this video will. Right? Or if I post a video saying why Shiva's going to a million, I bet I get a bunch of clicks. That's how stupid people are. That's all it is. All you got to do to get people to click is just say something ridiculously dumb, either to the up or to the down. So if I go live and say why the stock market's going to crash another 30%, I'm going to get a lot of people tune in for that. And if I send it out, why? Why? Fear and greed, man. Fear and greed. And if we know people are that dumb, and believe me, the advantage, the reason some people get rich and others don't is a lot of people are dumb. And, and if you don't believe that, you might be the dumb guy, Okay. That's not 100%. If you don't believe that, you're probably that guy. You're like, what does he mean everybody's dumb? That's you. You should know. Most people are consumers, right? They're consumers. They're not on the other side of the cash register. They do not understand the theory of investing, right? They don't. They just don't. It's not a math thing. You show them the math. They just don't get it. They just don't get it. And they're not going to get it. And they will never build wealth in the stock market because sometimes it goes down. 
And you could say, yeah, but if you look over the history, and you know, it averages nine percent a year. And if you were invested in, if you invested in the and you didn't have time to money, you have what about you three for a million? You know, that's what all of our fucking uh, uh, fintech nerds say. They're like, oh, if you just put all your money into an index fund, shut up. Nobody wants to hear that shit. I'm not putting all my money into an index fund. Get the fuck out of here. So you put your money into an index fund. I'm trying to get rich. I ain't never met anybody that said, Gerald, you know how I got rich? I put all my money into the S&P 500. No one ever said that ever. So take that mediocre average bullshit. Take it down there. Does it work for 9% a year? 100%. I don't want to make 9% a year. I'd rather lose 40% one year and then be up 120% the next year. Then if I can be like average, it's just me. I don't mind the swings. On the swings is where I get the money to make up for it on the way up, man. You get what I'm saying? So Uber's going to 60. Might take two, three years. But in the meantime, I might get 2,000 shares. And when it goes to 60, I get to buy an apartment building. Why not? Do you know how to buy an apartment building? I do. You know how to buy a fourplex? I do. Maybe DraftKings could buy you one. Right? Why not? Not this week. Not this month. Maybe not the next six months. But maybe it could this time next year. With Fed two two months into this, the economy gets bad. They gotta they gotta start lowering rates again. <laughs> you don't think that's possible? Come on, man. Come on, man. You guys, you got to take this game bigger, bro. That's, that's a universal word, too. I don't just mean dudes there. All you ladies not buying Bitcoin. Like, very few women own Bitcoin. Shit goes high. I don't want to hear any crying. You got a chance. Right? Women can buy a house just as easy as a man. You just need good credit and money down. So all you single ladies out there, you... I don't know why you wouldn't be thinking about real estate. You don't need to think about a husband or a man. You need to get a house. This, when he's dead, this house will still be making money. When you get divorced, this house will still be making money. The house I was born in is still there. I'll be dead. It'll probably still be there. All kind of businesses opened around it, started, went up and down. That will be there. The S&P 500 will be there. You know, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Verizon, DraftKings, Uber. Uber and them are the new Chipotle's, Facebook's, Intel's, Microsoft's. Those used to be growth stock, guys. Amazon used to be a growth stock, right? Facebook used to be a, a, a new growth stock. IPO fell from $38 to $18. Total class lost all my money. Remember that? Oh, you should have bought Facebook and lost all my money. And now what? It's $350. Fuck. I wish every time it dropped 50%, I would have had courage to buy it. Fuck. I wish your parents would have had courage to buy it every time it dropped 50 And I could do 100,000 stocks. Not true. Maybe 100. That every time they drop 50, 60%, if your parents only would have had the courage, you'd be rich. Coca-Cola. Now, the premium ones, they don't drop that much, 30%, 40%. But if you have your buckets wrong, you're sitting on a bunch of student debt, car payments, and all your finance and all this bullshit going down. Some of you guys are financing couches. Financing a bunch of dumb shit. You need to be financing smart shit. I had a kid the other day, he bought, took a loan to buy Bitcoin. He was in a panic. I said, what are you panicking about? Well, it's going down. You didn't know it could do that? Well, yeah. How about have some fucking conviction on what you just did? How about that? How about you stick with it, man? You've quit everything in life. You started this. Now stick with it. That's an option. His first thought is to cut, tail, and run. I wanted to choke him. Conviction, man. I can't teach it. You got to get it yourself. Understand the theory, man. And all that, you know, all that is about me trying to help you, man. Theory. That's not trading. I'm not talking trading right now, okay? 
Don't get that. I do teach trading, but I'm talking right now being an owner of assets that appreciate or produce cash flow. We can go through history and see every time Bitcoin did this, it went up. Now, if you believe this is the one time it won't, then you don't get to play this game. But every time you made that bet in the past, you lost. I'm taking the bet that keeps working. Over time, the S&P goes up. So if S&P stocks are on sale, that could be a good place for my time. Time times amount times yield, meaning, meaning take my time, focus my amount to get that yield, okay? Could be, you're at different places in life. You can't do all of these like me, right? I'm at a different place in life, but maybe you can. But usually it starts with concentrated, picking one. Get this one solid, get it locked, and then later we'll move down the road. So pick one. Um, you know, real estate is a good one if you're picking just one. All right, man, I hope that helps. I'll talk to you guys later.